Hello again, this is Pastor Matt. I realized today that uh, I hadn't finished my sermon series on the last week of the life of, Mar of Jesus in Mark, and I'm not sure that I will, but I only brought us as far as Thursday. We finished up on Wednesday, and I hadn't said anything about Thursday. Thursday is just a packed day. As you can probably guess by what's in the foreground here, the first thing that happens on Thursday is the Last Supper. And that's recounted in Mark 14, 17 through 26. In the evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. As they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you eating with me here will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one? He replied, it is one of you twelve who is eating from this bowl with me. For the Son of Man must die as the scripture declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. This is going to take us to another huge event that I, I hope I'll have time to talk about, which is the, the scene in the Garden of Gethsemane. But for now, let's talk about the Last Supper. As I've mentioned before, this book, The Last Week, has been a tremendous resource for me. And a lot of what I'm going to say today, most of what I'm going to say today, comes from there. So there's three things that happen here. They eat a Passover meal together. Jesus talks about how he's going to be betrayed. And he invests the bread and wine with meanings associated with his impending death, his body and his blood. So let's start with the second one. As I've mentioned before, one of the things that Mark talks about the most, if you read through the book of Mark, which I would recommend, read the whole book, over and over and over the disciples fail. By the time this night ends, by the time Thursday night ends, not only will Judas have betrayed Jesus, Peter will have denied him, and all the rest will have fled. All these people portrayed here at this table will be gone. Now, of course, this meal has significance, and it's a significance we've been thinking about a lot lately because this is the model for our Eucharist. What is communion? Well, the authors of the book here break it down into, into kind of four main symbols to the or meanings of the meal. The first is that Jesus often taught at meals. He ate with many different people. He went into homes, um, and many of his parables are about food and banquets. And of course, the fact that he chose to eat with the marginalized and the outcast gave a lot of ammunition to his enemies. Now, Jesus didn't just talk about inclusion. He ate with the people that he was talking about. Think about the difference between attending a fundraising dinner and eating with the people for whom you're raising funds. I've been fortunate enough to travel to the banquet in Sioux Falls once. I'd sure like to go again, but a big part of that is beyond just serving, but dining with people. And that's a vital thing for us to remember. We can pray for the marginalized. We can talk about our concerns for the other. But they'll remain the other until we break bread with them, until we meaningfully join together with them. But you know, it wasn't just about inclusion. The food was important too. 
For Jesus, food mattered. Bread, when Jesus talked about bread, Jesus was talking about the stuff of life. Think about the Lord's Prayer. Yes, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But give us this day our daily bread. And the sharing of bread is about justice. It's about distribution. Isn't it interesting that one of the elements of communion, one of the things with communion is the distribution. The taking of the bread from the one spot and giving it to the masses. Now, another aspect that uh, Borg and Croissant point out about the Last Supper is it has a lot of echoes to the feeding of the 5,000. The four verbs, took, blessed, broke, gave. They're included in both. Remember, at the feeding of the 5,000, it's getting late in the day, and the disciples come and say, we got to get these people out of here. They're getting hungry, and there's nothing for them to eat. And Jesus says, give them something. They say, what? We don't have enough money to buy food for all these people. There's no stores around. What are you talking about, Jesus? What are we supposed to do? And Jesus doesn't then just go, oh, watch this. I'll pull a rabbit out of my hat. Here's some manna from heaven, or I'm going to turn these stones into bread. He says, go find out what's there. Disciples, go talk to everyone. Find out what food there is. Once they do that and bring it to them, he says, okay, now make them sit down in groups. Once they do that, he says, no, distribute the food. The disciples are a part of an integral part of the process. And then once they've eaten, he says, collect the leftovers. Jesus takes what's already there. And once it passes through his hands, it's not only enough, it's more than enough. And that's part of what carries through to our current communion and to the Last Supper. Jesus gives thanks and he shares and it's enough. Now the Last Supper is a Passover meal. And if you remember the first Passover meal, it was after the 10th plague was announced that the firstborn of every family would be killed. The Passover meal consisted of the slaughtering of a lamb and the lamb's blood, some of the lamb's blood was used to mark the doorpost so that the angel of death would pass over. So we could look at it that way and say the lamb gave its life to save the people and that's true, but there was more to it than that. The people were instructed to kill the lamb cook the lamb, and eat it all. If there weren't enough people in the house to eat it all, bring someone else in. You see, it isn't just about the kind of sacrifice that is a substitution. It was protection against death, and it was food for the journey. What Jesus is giving these people at the table at the Last Supper, what's offered to us when we take communion, is sustenance for the journey. And that brings us to our last point, the body and the blood. When someone passes away, we might think about uh, their soul being separated from their body, but this separation of the body and blood speaks of violent death. The bread and wine are the body and the blood. And this ties in with this idea of abundance from the Last Supper, but more so of sacrifice. These aren't just reminders that Christ died for us, of a substitution, this magical thing that says, now with the wafer and the wine, now you're reminded that Christ died for you. It's about participation. We're invited to travel with Jesus through death and resurrection. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why there's such a struggle right now on what do we do about communion? Is it okay to do, to give the elements when we're not together or is it not okay? I don't know the answer to that, but I know that 
the, the, the wafer and the wine, the body and the blood are real tangible things. To wrap up, I'll use a quote directly from the Borg and, and Croissant text. The Last Supper is about bread for the world. God's justice against human injustice. Bread is justice. Food is justice. Food is not meant to be hoarded. That's all through the Bible. Food is meant to be shared. It's about a new Passover from bondage to liberation. And it's about participation in the path that leads through death to a new life. Amen and Godspeed.